Today we're talking the art of negotiating when it comes to buying property and how this can make or break a deal. Thanks for tuning in guys and welcome back today. I'm actually sitting out the front of a, um, a property waiting for a building inspector to arrive and I was just thinking and wanted to bring you a video today on negotiating to buy a property. Um, obviously negotiating can be really make or break a property deal, um, be it if you're looking to buy, your, buy something for, as a home or something as an investment. So I want to break down the four key elements that I see that are so crucial when you are negotiating to make sure you get the best deal. The first element is understanding the landscape, that's understanding the market. Um, if you don't understand what actual a fair price is for a property and don't understand what you'd actually consider a win, you're essentially trying to hit a bullseye without a, a target. It's important before you start negotiations is to have an end goal in mind. What would you actually like to achieve and purchase that property for? Um, now, it's important not to just look at the, the asking price of a property and think, oh, if we can get 10000 off that, that's going to be a, a good buy. There's a number of elements that come into that. Often properties are priced very competitively on the market and you may actually need to pay over the asking price to secure it. Or sometimes properties are well overpriced and even if you got 100,000 off, that property is still not a good deal. So make sure you know the market, do your research and work out what you actually are prepared to pay for a property. If it's something you're looking at moving into yourself as a home, you may have spent 12 months looking on the market for that perfect property you might be a little bit more flexible on what you will pay for it versus if you're looking at buying it for an investment and it has to stack up, the numbers have to work. So, like I say, know the landscape, know what your, your target is to, to be when you finish that negotiation, what you would consider a win. If you don't know what would be a win, it's really hard to start those negotiations as you don't know where to start or what you're actually aiming for. The second element is to create a win-win situation. You want both the, the vendors, so the people that you're buying the property from, and yourself to feel like you've had a win. If one side feels like they're, they're losing in the agreement, they may turn around and try and terminate the contract. They may be less, less understanding if you need to change something, and it can create a lot more drama. So make sure you do create that sort of win-win. Um, and that can be done in a number of ways, but keep that in mind, try and create a situation where the vendors are feeling like they're having a win, um, as well as obviously you want to win in that negotiation as well. The third step is where to negotiate, where to start negotiating on price. Now, if a property is on the market for 370, market value of fair price for that property is 360, and you want to pick it up for 350, where you start negotiating can really make a difference on the end result. Um, so let's say the property's on the market for 370, you want to pick it up for 350. I recommend just testing the water slightly lower than what you would pay for the property. Essentially, you don't want the vendor accepting your first offer, as you will have that question in your mind, would they have accepted less? So that's part of this creating that win-win. Also, vendors, if they accept your first offer, might later go, well, could we have got more out of them? So. Keep that in mind with your first offer. I do recommend coming in slightly lower than what you'd actually be willing to pay for the property. That way you can come up in price, making those vendors feel like they've had a bit more of a win and you can make sure that you're not overpaying in the property when you could have got it for cheaper again. The fourth tip is to look at the intangibles, things that don't actually cost you money. So you might, once again on this example of a, a property on the market for 370, you wanna pick it up at 350. You might find yourself at a $5,000 log ahead. So the, the vendors are at $355, you've come to $350. Look at what intangibles are, what, what things that won't cost you actual money but will create a better win for the vendors. That might be a quick settlement if the property's vacant or if they're living in the home and need to find somewhere to move to, you might be able to do a four or five month settlement that is a real cherry on the top for them. That might be worth $5,000 to them. So they might come down if you'll consider if you'll consider doing a longer settlement um, other things to consider might be a bigger deposit um, if you can make that contract unconditional so not subject to finance not subject to building and pests the vendors might consider that more attractive so ha have a look and see what you can come up with maybe you're buying it as an investment and can rent the property back to the vendors for a 12-month period 
that might be something they find really attractive. So there you have it guys, that's my four key elements that I strongly believe if you can have a good grasp of before you go into a negotiation, you're gonna be so much better off. So that's understanding the market, understanding the landscape, what would you consider a win? Creating a win-win environment so that the vendors feel like they've had a win, so you feel like you've had a win. It's certainly a better way to do business and you'll have such a higher chance of getting that deal across the line. Starting out at the right negotiation point, if you start too low, like once again, if you're trying to pick the property up for 350 and you offered 280, it's probably gonna kill the negotiation straight there. The vendors are gonna think you're a bit of a, a toss um, and it's not gonna help things moving forward. You wanna start negotiating pretty close to what your end goal is. It's gonna be the, the best way to, to get that result for you. And then finally, consider other things in monetary value. So it's not just about the purchase price. If you can throw in a short or a long settlement, rent the property back to the vendors, come up with another creative tool to use and use that as the last step in the negotiations. When you do find yourself at that loggerheads, throw that little cherry in there to see if you can get across the line. A little bit of an impromptu video today in the car, but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you hit that like button and if you wanna see more, subscribe. Um, look forward to bringing you more content and I'll see you guys soon.